So, we can now trim ranges and references in Excel thanks to a new update for Microsoft 365 Insiders on the beta channel that was released last month. That's August 2024. Here, there's a column of names, and I want to create an email address for each. I can do this easily by putting together a concatenated string that references the range and includes the other necessary parts of an email address, as well as wrapping it all inside the lower function to ensure that the email addresses are in lowercase. That works, but I am planning to update this worksheet to include more names as time goes on. Therefore, it's a good idea to future-proof the references so I don't have to keep updating them. The problem is, if I expand this range, this happens. I am left with an unnecessary surplus that only adds clutter. This is where the new trim range function comes in handy. If I wrap the reference inside it, look at what happens now. Even though the reference hasn't changed, it cuts off everything after the values. This is ideal for not only tidying things up, but also for performance, because even if your ranges go all the way down to the very last row, 1,048,576, it will still return the same thing. However, as more names are included, the result range expands to include the additions. If I leave a gap and include a name further down, it will still return the unnecessary at email.com part up until the last one. Now, trim range does have two optional arguments for determining what gets trimmed. There's row trim mode and col trim mode. As the names suggest, one's for rows, the other's for columns. This example is based on rows, so we'll look at that. There are four options. Do not trim rows, trim leading empty rows, that's the ones at the top of the range, trim trailing empty rows, that's the ones at the bottom, and if you don't specify anything like I didn't, it defaults to trim both leading and trailing empty rows. Based on the default setting, you can see if I remove the name at the top, the final result adapts the same way as if it were at the bottom. Moving on, there's also a new reference operator that does the same thing as the trim range function in a more succinct way. Get rid of trim range in the formula and put a full stop to the left and the right of the colon to replicate the trim range default. This will trim leading and trailing rows. You guessed it, if you only want to trim leading rows, include a full stop only on the left or only on the right for trailing. Hopefully you'll find plenty of other good uses for trim range and the new operator. Most of the time though, I would recommend you use official Excel tables, but sometimes there are good reasons not to, such as their lack of compatibility with dynamic arrays. And that's where this function and operator could be most useful.